Holy Living As the world becomes more and more decadent, we should continue to trust God to enable us to live righteous and godly lives. Here now is Gene to explain this principle. And here we're introduced to another man who walked with God, who lived in a very decadent world. It was getting more and more and more decadent. His name was Noah. And so we have here the story of Noah in Genesis 9, 11. These are the family records of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. And let me just simply say that this is the first time in the Old Testament story that a man was called righteous. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. Now we're going to talk about what that means in just a moment. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth, the earth was filled with violence. It's interesting that as, as people began to deteriorate, violence became a significant part of that. If you go to the Old Testament story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you will see that that city was permeated with violence. And uh, that's a natural result of that, that decadence. Now, the important thing for us to remember here, and here's where it's important to have the whole biblical story in perspective. When it says that Noah was a righteous man, it doesn't mean that he was saved by his works. It doesn't mean that he was saved because he lived a godly life and walked with God among his contemporaries. And his contemporaries were evil people. They were deteriorating. And basically, we need to understand, as a result of, of this statement, that he was righteous because of his faith. No man ever became righteous in God's eyes or saved or justified because of his own righteousness, because of his own works. And that's a story that, that, that uh, a truth that emerges from the biblical story. Hebrews 11:7 gives us some perspective on this, going into the New Testament. By faith, Noah. And this comes from Hebrews 11, the great uh, Old Testament Hall of Faith, where all of these individuals are mentioned from the Old Testament. Noah was one of those that are mentioned in Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah, after being warned about what was not yet seen, in reverence built an ark to deliver his family. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by what? Faith. Our heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. In other words, his righteousness was rooted first and foremost in his faith in God, and God counted it to him as righteousness, not because of his works. Now by faith, he also lived a godly life after he became righteous in God's sight and reflected that righteousness then to his contemporaries. It's important to see that uh, distinction, because if we don't, it really creates a serious problem in biblical interpretation. In Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 10, moving into the New Testament, uh, Paul helps us understand this by, he says, we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Now, the principle that grows out of that is, is simply this from the New Testament. When we present the message of hope in Jesus Christ, and Paul does that, obviously, in Ephesians, when we present the message of hope in Christ, we must make sure that all people understand that good works do not contribute in any way to their salvation experience. If we do, we are teaching a false doctrine. And we need to understand that. Now you see, the important thing is that when you take the verse we just looked at from Ephesians, where we are God's creation to do good works uh, in Christ, we need to go back two verses to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which says, For by grace you're saved through faith. See, the important thing to remember in the biblical story is that no one in the Old Testament or the New Testament was ever saved by works. We can't do that 
It's impossible to do enough to be saved. We always fall short of God's glory, no matter how many good works we do. And that's why Jesus Christ had to come and die for our sins. For by grace you're saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. That couldn't be clearer. But, but Paul makes it even clearer. He says, it is God's gift. You can't work for a gift. Salvation is a gift. It comes from God, not from works, so that no one can boast. How many people have read those verses? They don't understand them. They still teach that we're saved by works. If our good works outweigh our bad works, then we can enter heaven. The Bible doesn't teach that. And Noah was a man who walked with God because he was saved by grace through faith, just as we'll see Abraham was as well. So the question for reflection and response is, how can we as Christians develop our faith and trust in the Lord so that we can walk with God even though we are surrounded by people who are abandoning the moral and spiritual values of the Bible? And this, of course, is the question that connects the question that we just looked at with the previous principle, being light and salt in this world. How can we do that? Well, one thing that's very important is spelled out for us very clearly in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. We could go to a lot of verses, but this is such a key one. Let us be concerned about one another. We need one another to answer this question and to live out the answer to that question. Let us be concerned about one another in order to promote what? Love and good works. And he goes on to say, don't let us forget to meet together, as a habit of some is. But we need to meet and encourage one another. And that's very important, because without one another, we will not become people that are walking with God as we should. We need each other. And that's one of the beautiful things about the New Testament. We're not out there by ourselves, as Noah was, with his family. We're part of a larger family, which is called the family of God. And we can encourage each other and help each other to walk with God. Holy living. <laughs>